Hello. Today we'll be talking about forming storage enclosures in SunNav. There is no foolproof logic to form storage enclosures automatically. The storage ports log into the fabric, unfortunately based on different storage array vendors and software versions of the model number. The storage enclosures uh, cannot automatically be formed by SunNav. Therefore, the storage enclosure automatic formation is always disabled in SunNav by default. Later on, a user can enable the enclosure formation and the following logic is used in the order below. If the storage ports has an FDMI configuration, then the FDMI storage name is used. That's typically not the case for storage environment. If the storage port is a FICON device port, then the storage name is derived from the FICON fields, namely RNIV sequence number. The third one, finally, is the node symbolic name is used to group the storage ports into enclosure. If the above logic does not work in an environment, and that's typically the case, it's recommended to create enclosures manually in Senna. And those can be formed in three ways. The first one is by using SendNav UI and manually map the device ports to an enclosure. This could be a lengthy process if you have a lot of storage ports in your environment. The second way is by importing a mapping file into SendNav, a CSV comma separated file, which contains the port WWN and the storage enclosure it belongs to. The third one and the object of the demo today is to use the storage mapping policy in order to determine the enclosure. This video that we are about to show you explains how to use the SunMap storage mapping policy to efficiently create storage enclosures. This policy can be created based on an existing pattern uh, used for naming the device ports, such as the ports or aliases if it's a brownfield environment, the connected switch port name, that is if you're using the false dynamic port name features or if you've named your F ports accordingly, or to use the node symbolic name, and there are other options as well as we will demonstrate in the video. In today's example, we'll be using the node symbolic name of the storage ports where the storage array serial number is embedded within the symbolic name string. We'll use this pattern to group multiple array ports connected to different fabrics to form enclosures. When new ports are connected to the fabrics later, the policy can be rerun to add the new ports to the appropriate enclosure. This may lead to creation of new enclosures as well. Today, the topology that we'll be using is two identical fabric marked as Ritter Multipath SAN A and Ritter Multipath SAN B on the right. And on the far right, you can see the node symbolic name that we will be using for the storage ports. And as you can see in the rectangle shown in here, we have the serial number of the storage array embedded within the node symbolic name. As you can see, we have two serial number, one that ends in the string WA5 and another one that ends in the string 870. So the idea here is to use this symbolic name and the policy to extract this string and create two enclosures for our environment. Now onto the demo. To demonstrate and illustrate what we have been talking earlier, so we will start with the health summary dashboard. And as you can see here, we do not have donut here. As I mentioned, the creation of enclosures is fundamental in Sanna to derive features such as the health summary dashboard in here, but also the IO health and latency widgets and other features in Sanna. Creation of hosts and storage enclosures is paramount in order to make sure that you're using SendNav effectively. So if we move to the inventory, we can see the two fabrics here, A and B that I talked about earlier. These are identical. And we also have the two storage arrays connected to these fabrics. But if we go to the storage objects here, we can see that we do not have any storage array yet created. Finally, to show you the topology of Fabric A and Fabric B. So we're going to go into Fabric A. And if you open the topology, you can see that we have two hosts attached to the Fabric A on the right side. And we have four physical storage ports that are attached to the Fabric. 
Now, if you look at each of these physical ports, you can see an icon here that says three, which indicates that each physical port contains three virtual ports as shown here. So this physical port uh, right here, there's ends in 1F00, contains three NPIV ports, 1F01, 02, and 03. And the same is true for the other physical ports that you see here. So in total, we have four physical ports, and each physical port contains three virtual ports. And as you can see, the storage array here, these are all singleton, meaning that uh, there is no storage array that has been defined for this particular port, and same for these. The same is true for the Fabric B. So if we go to Fabric B and we open the topology, we will see the exact same setup that we have in here. Now, if we go to the storage ports in the inventory, I moved from the topology to inventory storage ports. You can see that we have 32 ports. As I mentioned, we have four physical ports in Fabric A. You can see them here, Fabric A. And we have four physical ports in Fabric B right here. And then we have the NPIV ports. We have a total of 32 ports, and we have a total of 24 NPIV ports and eight physical ports, three NPIV ports per physical port. So now the idea is that we would like to create the storage enclosure policy. So to do this, navigate to send monitoring and inventory setting. In here, there is a menu that says define and create policy based enclosure, map the ports. So if we select this, then we can see that by default, this is the default screen. You can see that the auto enclosure is selected and the auto storage enclosure policy is not selected. And we've created a send up custom policy here to extract the serial number from the node symbolic name from position 20 to 29. As I mentioned in the slide, you can also use the connected switch port name if you are using dynamic port name or if you have defined F port names in FOS, or you can use the zone alias if this is a brownfield environment and you've already defined the zone alias and you'd like to extract the storage name from the zone alias, which is typically the case. But if this is a brand new environment, then you have the option to use various fields. And in our case, we'll be using the node symbolic name as I just explained. Once you define the policy, then you can run it and by using the action run manual storage policy. And if I run it, then it's going to ask me what fabrics do I want to run it onto. So then I'm going to select all fabric in my case. And when I hit next, then it's going to run the policy on all the 32 storage ports. As you can see, we have the 32 items here showing the storage ports and there's no existing storage. And when the algorithm runs, it extracts the proper serial number from the node symbolic name. And as you can see, there's only two in here, one that ends in WA5 and one that ends in 870. In your environment, if you run a policy, you may have some undesired results for some ports because as the run manual policy runs stateless on all your storage ports. So you need to make sure that you exclude the items that you don't want if you want to not associate these ports with an enclosure. And furthermore, you can also override the name that is determined by SunNav for some ports if you'd like to. In our case, this policy is perfect. And so we're going to save it. When I save this, then what's going to happen is that SunNav is going to associate these ports to these storage enclosures as specified in the screen. You can see here that we have 32 and only two enclosures, as I mentioned below. So when I click save, the storage enclosures are going to get formed, and then we will be seeing them in the inventory storage menu, and the topology will reflect that, as well as the health summary dashboard. So now that they have been properly created, if we go back to the inventory, we can see that the storage ports now are mapped because the storage attribute of the storage course shows the proper array. And to demonstrate that even further, we now have two storage array enclosures that have been created, each with 16 ports, then four physical ports, and 12 
virtual ports. If we now navigate to the topology and we look at Sun B, for example, we can see that we have two storage arrays here that have been created and each contain two physical ports and two physical ports for the second one. And again, if we show the virtual ports, we will see the virtual ports, six items for each. So same thing for Fabric B. If we navigate to Fabric B and we show in Browse, we will get the exact same result. The other thing that will happen is that in the health summary dashboard, uh, we will see the storage array. Here, the health summary dashboard runs every 15 minutes. Since I just created the storage enclosure, it does not appear here. But if you want to force it, you can go to SunNav, Health Scores Calculation, and you can force the health summary dashboard to run its computation by clicking the wrong computation item. As soon as I click this, the computation score will be run. And if you go back to the dashboard, you will now see the two storage enclosures that have been formed properly. This concludes the demo of how to use SunNav storage enclosure mapping policy to get your enclosures properly formed in SunNav, which is critical in most SAN environments.